Greg Carter, my three friends, my three friends, Greg Carter. Picture this, it's my 44th birthday, and I'm standing in front of an MRI machine. There's something very wrong inside, and the doctor wants to know what it is. As the nurse injects dye into my veins, I think, how did I get here? I got here with the help of my three friends. Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, let me introduce my three friends. The Marlboro Man. Big hat, bigger horse, <coughs> hacking up a lung as he rides into the sunset. Ronald McDonald. He may be a clown, but he makes billions of dollars pushing junk food. And Jose Cuervo. A tequila so popular, it had its own hit song here in the United States. Have you ever spent time with any of my three friends? A few of you have. Well, for 25 years, we were inseparable. You see, I counted on my three friends to numb the pain of a deep and often suicidal depression. I smoked like a chimney. I drank like a fish. I ate like, well, let's just say I ballooned to almost 300 pounds. Picture me as I am now, only pregnant with nine-year-old twins. <laughs> then I got a disease called diverticulitis. Doctor said, Greg, we may have to cut you open, take out a chunk of your large intestine, and hang a plastic bag to catch the waste products of digestion. How does that sound? Not so good. Hence, the MRI. They finished the injection, had me lay down on a cold, hard slab, pushed me into a dark chamber, and told me to lie very still. Depression had caused me to want to die. Now here I was, rehearsing for the funeral. I was quite literally killing myself. I was pickling my liver. I was scorching my lungs. And I was going to eat myself to death and die with a bag of waste hanging out of my side. Suddenly, I was struck with a wave of sorrow. I thought about my wife and my three young children at home. I would never see them finish school, never celebrate their weddings, never get to hold my own grandchildren. But I also saw a ray of hope if I could dump my three friends, figure out another way to deal with my depression, I might have one last chance to save my life. But where to start? Hmm. Well, I'd already quit smoking 487 times before. What's one more? Other things were more of a learning process. I went to the health food store. They had a whole shelf of agave syrup. Jose Cuervo spoke up. Hey, Greg, I am made of agave syrup. You'll see tequila is a health food. <laughs> no gracias, Jose. Adios. I made green smoothies. Then I'd add a handful of red strawberries. Do you know what I got? A brown smoothie. <laughs> Do you know what a brown smoothie looks like? Ronald said, I know, I know, it looks like one of my chocolate shakes, uh huh? No thanks, Ronald. I'll stick with my fruits and veggies. As I lost weight, I began to walk a block, two blocks, 
and then to run a mile, two miles. <sighs> the Marlboro man spoke up. Hey, Greg, if you just like being short of breath, I should introduce you to my friends, emphysema and lung cancer. No thanks, Marlboro man. Right on out of here. I studied fitness and nutrition, and I worked very hard. In less than a year, I lost 125 pounds and fulfilled my life's dream of running a 26-mile marathon. But as hard as I worked on my physical aspect, I worked even harder to reprogram my mind. I went to seminars, I read books, and I practiced what I learned. Slowly, two steps forward, one step back, I walked out of that dark country where I had spent so much of my life. Does this mean my long journey was over? <laughs> no, nothing is ever over. My three former friends still live in my town. They still say, hey, Greg, come join us for a drink, a smoke, a snack. I just keep running and ignore them. And sometimes, late at night, the black dog of depression still scratches and howls at my door. And most of the time, I can keep him outside where he belongs. And you might ask, Greg, isn't it embarrassing to share these sordid details of your life? No, it's not. Because frankly, I don't care about my past. I care about my future and yours. What friends do you have that you need to let go of? If this ordinary guy can lose almost half of his body weight, become an endurance athlete for 14 years, then what's possible for you? If this addict can say goodbye to the Marlboro man, Ronald McDonald and Jose Cuervo, then what is possible for you? And if I can emerge from decades of despair into a life of joy, then what is possible for you? I encourage you to embrace life fully, live life passionately, just be careful who you call your friends. Mr. Contest Chair.